For the first time in nearly a century, thousands of Muslims have been gathering at Istanbul's iconic Hagia Sophia for Friday prayers. Turkish authorities converted the historic site into a mosque earlier this month. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan joined worshippers at the landmark earlier. He issued a decree reinstating the 1,500-year-old building as a mosque after a court ruled that its conversion to a museum in 1934 was illegal. Secular and Christian leaders from around the world have condemned the decision to convert the Hagia Sophia, which was originally built as an Orthodox Christian cathedral. Journalist Gareth Brown has got this update from outside the site in Istanbul. Thousands of people travelled from across Turkey and from as far as Western Europe for Friday prayers here at the Hagia Sophia today. The building in Istanbul opened its doors for Friday prayers for the first time in 86 years and that came after a decision just a few weeks ago by Turkish President Erdogan to turn the building back into a functioning mosque. It had previously been a museum and it was President Erdogan himself who was leading the pre-prayer recital this afternoon. Now that decision has been controversial, especially with historians and cultural specialists who are deeply concerned for the welfare of the building. The building will now move from the control of the Ministry for Antiquities into control of the Ministry for Religious Affairs and loses all sorts of um, cultural experts who, who are looking over the building's welfare. But those concerns weren't at the forefront of worshippers' minds today. There was lots of nationalist sentiment. People feel a wrong has been righted and the mosque is now open. There's been strong condemnation to the reconversion, some of the strongest coming out of Greece, which has Europe's largest Orthodox Christian community. Let's cross now to our Athens Bureau, where we can speak to our correspondent, Fadil Kerry. Good afternoon to you. How has Greece been reacting to this final step in the conversion of the Hagia Sophia? Hello, Oliver. The move of the Turkish government has sparked a lot of dismay. Uh, in Greece, Athens had called on Erdogan to maintain it as a museum, as a nod to Istanbul's multi-religious heritage. In Greece, bells today, bells tolled and flags flew at half-staff at hundreds of churches across the nation. The Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis in a television message said that Turkey is a troublemaker and said that it is threatening the peace in Eastern Mediterranean. What is happening today in Istanbul is not a show of force, but proof of weakness. Of course, they don't have the power to overshadow the radiance of a World Heritage Site. However, they tarnish universal values. That is why universal condemnation is demanded. The Greek Orthodox leader, Archbishop Hieronymus, is uh, holding a special service at Athens Cathedral later this evening. There are protests being organized right now in social media by various groups. And in Thessaloniki, the second largest city in Greece, uh, they will be holding vigils uh, tonight. Uh, for you to understand uh, what uh, this day means uh, to everyone, almost everyone in Greece, uh, you need to know that uh, the heritage of uh, the Roman, the Byzantine Empire, which was predominantly Greek-speaking and Orthodox, still remains very valuable for Greece. Hagia Sophia is uh, considered a very important monument, cultural and religious monument in Greece. And, of course, all this happens in a period uh, where there is a lot of tension in the Eastern Mediterranean between Greece and Turkey over natural uh, resources. Uh, there has been uh, escalating tensions uh, the last uh, week, so this is considered in Greece as a move of provocation. Faye, thanks very much for that. Joining us there from our bureau in Athens. Well, for more on this story, let's speak to Henry Hopwood Phillips. He's a historian who focuses on the Byzantine Empire. Thanks very much for joining us here on Euronews. First of all, why do you think that Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has gone ahead with this conversion right now, considering he's been in power for quite a bit of time? Uh, to be honest, I think the timing is irrelevant. Uh, he could have done this any time in his tenure. Uh, but I do think 
if we were to tie him with anything, it would be foreign policy at the moment. He's kind of mired in several fronts, whether it's uh, the Azerbaijani uh, Armenian conflict, whether it's Libya, whether it's Syria. You see he's exposed on multiple fronts and he needs to project a kind of a strong neo-Ottoman image. Now, this isn't the first time that the Hagia Sophia has been converted into a mosque. Of course, it happened centuries ago. But what's the difference between how it happened then and what's happening in the present day? Well, Mehmed II conquered the city, uh, but his Islam was, was a different Islam. Uh, what I mean by that is Erdogan projects this kind of, uh, I would call it an anachronistic Islam. It's an Islam that's a kind of caricature that suits today's uh, identity politics rather than the true historical picture. I mean, what I'm talking about here is in early Islam, Muhammad, for instance, signed the Treaty of Najran in the early 7th century that guaranteed to the Christians security for their lives, their religion, their property, uh, no interference in the practice of their Christianity, i.e. their churches. And a lot of Turks will know that as part of their end time narratives, their eschatology, they actually believe that uh, the Romans, which is the old name for the Orthodox, they are meant to fight in an alliance with them with another enemy before the, you know, the end times arrive. So there's, there's, a strong, there's a strong argument that even on Erdogan's plane of Islam, he's incorrect that the path he's following. And this is a huge change from what General Ataturk had laid down when he wanted more secular values in the country. Is this going to hamper relations with the other minority religions? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's become a bit of a joke. It's become a bit of a joke that um, Turkey's posing, it's posing, especially for tourism purposes, as a good custodian of the churches and other minorities of Turkey, when the, the number of churches has dwindled from thousands in, let's say, the 17th century to, left, to fewer than 200 today. Um, and they're kind of hiding it behind judicial decisions um, when it's nakedly political. I mean, this decision to convert the, the museum into a mosque was rejected twice, once in 2008 and, and again in 2018. And, and suddenly... The Sultan, as he's jokingly known in Turkey, changed his mind and the judiciary effectively asked how high do you want us to jump? And it's changed within two years from a rejection. Um, and it's not a surprise in a country where 1,500 lawyers have effectively been arrested in three years. That's, Henry that's Hopwood, according to Human Rights Watch, by the way. Henry Hopwood, Phillips, some strong views there. I'm sure the Turkish government would refute quite a lot of them. But thank you very much for joining us and apologies for the poor connection that we had on that line there.